Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about the three-day water fast. Clean the brain, reset your energy. Let's get into some of the benefits and what happens during the three days. Let's get right into it. Benefits. Improves immune function, repairs damage to cells, removes dysfunctional cells and pathogens, reduces neural inflammation, or basically things like prime glial cells, increase autophagy, breaks down cells and other pathogens in our system, decreases autoimmune disease, benefits gut flora or resets the gut flora, and increases DNA repair. Okay, so there's a lot of benefits to a three-day fast. Now, if you want to do the three-day fast, I would suggest consulting a physician especially if you have insulin dependent diabetics right because if you go on a fast and you continue to take your insulin it's going to be problematic people who are menstruating i suggest not doing a three-day fast during menstruation because it could really deplete you hypoglycemics people who go without eating get shaky irritable um, angry right those are the people who do not want to do a three-day fast immediately they need to get into more of a keto adaptive state uh, before going on a three day fast. People who are on a lot of different medications because medications uh, can change or dosages can change uh, related to how much you're eating and uh, depletion of energy. So just make sure if you have any of these conditions, please consult your physician before going ahead and doing a three day fast. So let's get into some of the things that happen during a three day fast. So eight to 12 hours, what's gonna happen is you're gonna to start to deplete your glucose or sugar in your glycogen stores, right? It'll decrease that. You're gonna have a bump in uh, hormones called glucagon, human growth hormones, cortisol, and adrenaline. These are the things that will start to bump up your uh, glucose levels. So people don't realize that there are hormones that increase glucose in our system as we need it. And there's one hormone called insulin that brings uh, glucose down in our system. So it's really four to one, four hormones to one in terms of regulating uh, blood sugar. You will also increase ketones from fats. So as you deplete your glucose stores or glycogen stores, your body will start to use fat for fuel and it will produce something called ketones uh, to fuel your body. You also will start to experience hunger, all right? So in the next 18 to 24 hours there, you're gonna have a depletion of the glycogen stores even further, and you're gonna go through a process called gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is the process of producing sugar through the liver. Uh, it's basically uh, amino acid, acetate, and glycols. So you can use that uh, to fuel your body. Your body will have a natural mechanism to fuel itself. Further increase in autophagy. Autophagy is when you uh, have cellular debris, uh, things that are in your system that are kind of old and broken down. It'll start to kind of clean those things out of our system. It will also start to decrease autoimmunity because a lot of autoimmune conditions are related to food proteins. So if you have things that you're eating and it's causing inflammatory responses, the fact that you're on a fast will start to decrease that autoimmune process. It'll decrease neural inflammation. So when your body is used to using glucose, especially in the brain, uh, it can cause some inflammatory process, processes. When you switch your fuel from glucose to ketones, your brain will start to become a hybrid. So it will start to use ketones for fuel rather than glucose, and it will start to decrease inflammation. I have a separate video on this, so I'll link that below. It will also increase hormones called brain-derived neurotrophic factors and human growth hormones. And you'll start to see ketones in your blood. So what you can do is you can buy a little um, ketone meter 
you just kind of, it's like a, a glucose test. You just prick your finger and you can check your level of ketones. And in the first 18 to 24 hours, you're going to see 0.5 to maybe 1 in terms of the ketone levels. Now, everyone's different in terms of how fast they can go into ketosis. If, if you're someone who's very experienced and you do intermittent fasting and you're on a ketogenic diet, you're going to get into ketosis a little bit quicker. Day two, you're going to continue to increase brain-derived neurotropic factors as well as growth hormones. You're going to increase autophagy, and this is where the real cleanup starts to occur in day two. You'll start to break down tau proteins and uh, amyloids, Lewy body, alpha synucleins, and prime glial cells, all in the brain. These are all related to things like post-traumatic stress, uh, concussions, uh, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia. So it starts to break down these uh, aggregates in our brain and, and it, it clears it out. There's a process called mitophagy. It'll start to uh, get rid of inefficient mitochondria in our, in our cells. So mitochondria produces energy, ATP. And you want mitochondria to be very efficient and produce the number of ATPs that it's supposed to and it'll start to get rid of things that are damaged and get it out of our system, okay? Your insulin resistance starts to come down. So people who are pre-diabetic, diabetic, your insulin resistance or the problem of um, not enough um, gl glucose transport will start to break, right? So insulin resistance will start to uh, improve. It'll decrease fatty liver. And the reason is because you're using fat for fuel and part of that fat will come from the liver. So fatty liver uh, will start to break down, and you can clear fatty liver if it's not too far advanced. 90 to 95% of your energy will start coming from ketones in day two, right, instead of glucose, because you haven't eaten. And your hunger pains will start to actually subside in day two. For a lot of people, they go, I don't really feel hungry. I feel actually pretty good, right? Day three, continued autophagy and clearance reversal of real chronic disease. So people who have um, chronic autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue, a lot of issues with um, uh, joint pain, those types of things, will start to clear to a certain extent. It will increase your immune function, right? So your immune function will start to um, reset and improve, and there will be an improvement in overall function of the white blood cells. You'll also have increase in stem cells, right? The stem cells will differentiate into other tissues. So the stem cells will actually help you heal. Now, the goal of this three-day fast is what we call metabolic flexibility or metabolic switch. The ability for your body to use both glucose and ketones whenever it wants. So if you are someone uh, who eats every day, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times a day. What happens is you're using insulin mostly, right? Because you never let the sugar drop, right? So you get this wild fluctuation. So you have spike in sugar, spike in insulin, drop in sugar, drop in insulin. So you get this wild swing. The purpose of a three-day fast or any type of fasting is to even out the blood sugar throughout the day. So if you eat, let's say, what we call one meal a day, you'll have a, a spike in, in uh, insulin, and then you'll have a drop, and your other hormones will kick in, like glucagon, um, growth hormones, uh, adrenaline, etc., will kick in and will stabilize the blood sugar for the rest of the day. So that's what we want. We want stable blood sugar throughout the day, not this wild fluctuation. So as you do this uh, intermittent fasting or three-day fasting, there'll be a lot of health benefits. But the main point here is that it will start to stabilize blood sugar and your body will become a hybrid. Meaning when it has the sugar, it'll utilize it. If it doesn't have it and you skip a day of, of eating, then it will start to use ketones as fuels. Uh, so it'll, it, your engine becomes more of a uh, hybrid engine rather than a gasoline engine. So it's very important to do that. Now, when you break your fast, you don't want to just go ahead and, and just say, all right, I'm just going to eat whatever I want. You want to use things like maybe bone broth, 
uh, a vegetable soup uh, to break your fast, uh, maybe a small amount of protein. Okay. When you're doing the fast, you can use distilled water if you like, or you know, purified water would be best. You can use minerals and sea salt, especially on day two, maybe t uh, 24 to 48 hours. You want to start to use a little bit of minerals because you might feel a little bit depleted. So you can use minerals or sea salt uh, in your water and you can drink it. And then uh, you can also use sparkling, sparkling water, but not flavored water because what can happen with flavored water, you can start to uh, increase hunger pain, uh, pains in your system. Now, for those people who can't get through a three-day fast, I'm going to show you a method of doing uh, a three-day uh, modified fast on our next video. So we'll talk about how to do it without doing strictly water uh, for the three days. All right. So these are all the benefits. This is what happens. I have multiple videos on intermittent fasting, so I'll link those below. And what you want to do is if you ever go through it, uh, comment below. Let me know how you felt during the three-day fast and what the benefits of the three-day fast were for you. Now, when you do a three-day fast, uh, there's wide benefits. However, you have to be careful about some of those conditions that I talked about in the beginning of the video, um, and you want to consi uh, consult a physician before doing it. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.